Hello, my name is Poser P, and welcome back to my video tutorial series. Hopefully I have now secured a camera that I can actually use on a fairly regular basis. We'll see, fingers crossed. Anyways, so today, as you might have read in the video title, we are going to talk about audio rate modulation in the PC3. This is going to be a multi-part series, I don't know exactly how many, maybe two, maybe five, I'm not sure, but I'm going to cover different kinds of modulation that you can do at audio rates. Now, because the PC3 has such a wide range, both with the oscillators and with samples and key maps, uh, you can do all sorts of fun things. So you can turn key maps and samples into LFOs and, and, and all sorts of other stuff. So we're going to start today by focusing just on pitch modulation. Now, we've covered this before in the FM tutorials, but what I want to do now is kind of shift the paradigm. So we're still doing FM, but we're going to expand what we do with frequency modulation to include some of the stuff that we would traditionally traditionally do maybe with an LFO. Now I also want to talk a little bit about some of the limitations so that you uh, understand what you can do and, and a little bit about what you can't do as well. Now everything I'm going to discuss is also pertinent if you have a Forte or Forte SE um, or an Artis or any other thing that you can program with the sound tower editors. So this applies to the whole range of Kurzweil instruments that have some, any form of vast editing. Or if you happen to have a friend who has one and you have some keyboard that can load uh, PC3 files, but you can't edit uh, the PC3 files, then uh, this also applies to you. So um, thank you Kurzweil for making everything backwards compatible. That's really awesome. All right, so we're gonna start like we always do by turning on the keyboard and we'll wait for this to boot up. So what I want to do is uh, we're going to do something fairly simple. I don't want to get too involved with cascading and stuff like that. You could really go crazy with this if you wanted to. But we are going to keep it simple so that we can discuss some of the basic concepts and, and play with it and see what we can do with it um, just in a very simple context. Realizing, of course, that we can go crazy with this if we want to at a later time. So I've called up 999, the default program. I'm going to hit edit. We're going to go ahead and keep uh, one piano left as the key map. We'll go to the, uh, let's see, let's go to the amp page first. And we'll take off key uh, velocity tracking. And then I'm going to go to the out page and we'll pick algorithm number two. Okay, number two, this is very basic. Uh, the nice thing about this algorithm is this is available pretty much across the board from the earliest K2000 all the way up through the latest um, Forte. So everything we're going to do can apply to all of those instruments. All right, or at least uh, should mostly be able to apply to all those instruments. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a long time since I've programmed to K2000, but uh, for the most part, this should cover you. Uh, if you want to do a similar thing on, say, a K2000 or a K2600 or 2500 or even maybe a PC2. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a gain block. Now, because we are dealing with um, the, the way we do frequency modulation in VAST, so this is not using LFOs or anything like that, so this is just strictly in the DSP part of the VAST engine, is we use FM. Okay, so we're going to do a gain into a saw plus shaper. So we have gain here, saw plus shaper. Excellent. Okay, we're going to go to the mod page and we're going to assign some basic controls. Now, since we're working with the key map and the key map is an important part of the sound, uh, we're going to want to be able to control the pitch of the key map. We're going to want to be able to control gain and we're going to want to be able to control the pitch of the saw plus shape block. First of all, to give you a concept of what this sounds like, play a couple of notes. So this is a piano sample, just the default uh, key map, the, the very first one running through the gain block and then through the uh, saw plus shaper. So let's start with the gain block. Okay, I'm going to use sliders A, B, and C on the PC3 to control these. Since the gain block is in the middle, I'm going to pick slider B as my source. Okay, um, I predetermined that I like to have about 36 decibels down on the gain block. And over here on depth, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that at 40 decibels. 
Okay, so I'm going to play a note and raise that slider. So you can hear what that's doing. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the pitch of this sample. So this is a piano key map. We're going to pick slider A and we're going to set the depth to, let's see here, 7200 cents. And we will reduce this uh, by a corresponding amount. So with the slider all the way up, we're back at base pitch. With the slider all the way down, we're down 72 steps. So I'm going to put the gain block up about here. Or I'm going to put gain up here using slider B. OK, that sounds nice. Now I'm going to bring it down, the pitch of the key map. nice evocative um, semi-random modulation going on with that sine wave. It starts and then it kind of cuts in over time and then it changes a little bit over time too. Again we're using the key map to modulate this, right? So as I lower slider B you'll notice that the pitch modulation depth goes down and as I raise slider B, meaning I'm increasing the gain, it goes up. Now I get to a point and the pitch modulation um, is was somewhat smooth, but when you go over um, when you when you take gain over zero dB going into a saw plus shaper, what happens is it starts to approximate more of a square wave. So you get a bit of um, kind of like clipping uh, that, and you can hear it as I bring that slider up. So it kind of pushes that to the edge. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, put a couple more decibels on here. Let's put 44. And then you can really start to hear it. There it is. OK. Yeah. Oh, right. There we go with an extra 20 dB. So. You get some pretty extreme modulation going on there. Now because of that extra uh, little something, um, this isn't just pure frequency modulation uh, in the, the traditional FM sense. You're getting um, some other effects that are involved as well. So you're doing FM in the sense that you're modulating the pitch, but it's not smoothly following that key map uh, or whatever else you have running into the gain block. So that can be useful for getting different wave shapes out of it. So with this piano sample, now I have a much more harsh modulation. As I bring it down, it's much more smooth. So I, I, I can uh, effectively get a lot more uh, range out of the, the samples and things that I'm using for pitch modulation by, by doing that. OK, so let's focus on the pitch course of the, um, of the shaper. So we're going to go ahead and I know that this one has a max depth of 7200 cents, so I'm going to set that. I'm going to use slider C or MIDI 22 as my modulation source, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take the pitch down to minus 72 steps over here. I could put it in with the number pad or scroll to it. I just prefer to scroll to it for whatever reason. Okay, so sliders A and C all the way up. Now I'm going to bring slider C down. And I'm going to bring slider B up a bit. Okay, so um, that brightness that you hear when I bring up slider C, that's distortion, right? But when I lower slider A and bring the bring the pitch of that sample all the way down, and I'll bring up slider C again, it manifests itself. So what you're hearing is really slow distortion, but it's manifest in the way it affects the wave shape of the LFO. It's kind of neat because it's this nice little paradigm shift of like, okay, I go from like this distorted sound to like this kind of funky LFO. Um, and that's, you know, 
one of the things that makes the PC3 so awesome is that you can do stuff like that. Okay, so now we're going to just play with this for a second. So I'm playing with the sliders, playing random keys. It's kind of neat, huh? Okay, so this is cool. Um, now, what I'd really like though is if I hold down a key, okay, because this is a piano, right? It's going to cut off after a while because I'm using a I'm using a key map that um, decreases in volume over time, like a piano does. Let's change that. So we're going to go to the playback mode here, and we're going to go ahead and pick bi-directional. Now, let's start playing around again. So what you're hearing is the sample plays forward, plays in reverse, plays forward, in reverse, and it just goes back and forth like that. So as long as I hold down a key, it's going to keep playing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we tear holes in the universe. Isn't that grand? All right, well, that does it for this tutorial. Um, I hope that I've shown you some fun things you can do. Oh, uh, why don't we, for kicks, before we're done, before we're done, done, let's scroll through these real quick. Let's pick something else. Uh, well, I don't know. What sort of a key map should we pick? Let's pick a whirly. We'll take a whirly soft. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Let's try a couple of others. Oh, here we go. Accordion. Yeah. All right. So as you can see, you can just scroll through, find all sorts of cool stuff. And if you happen to own a PC3K, you can load your own samples and do this with your own samples, which is even more fun. Um, let us all hope and pray that the Forte and the Forte SE get sample loading so that we can load up our own user samples into those instruments and do all sorts of fun things with them there. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. And stay tuned because next time we're going to do more audio rate modulation. <laughs>